Hello. Today I'm going to be talking about our work learning to communicate with strangers via channel randomization methods. My name is Dylan Cope and this work was done with my collaborator Nandi Schutz. First, let's go over some key concepts. We think of a communication protocol as a mapping between concepts and symbols, and we use this to define intra-episodic protocol establishment, where agents enter into an environment without a shared protocol, but they develop it together throughout the episode. Then we talk about zero-shot communication, where two strangers that have never met before are able to communicate on their first interaction. So the key idea behind our work is that by randomly exposing agents to different protocols during the training, we should encourage the development of skills related to communicating with strangers. In order to investigate this, we design a simple environment where any agent can take one of two roles, a teacher or a student. In the first phase, which we call the protocol establishment phase, the teacher and students are given the opportunity to establish their protocol by looking at the same observations and the teacher assigns each observation a symbol. So i.e. each agent are shown the same input and the teacher makes utterances. Then in the final phase, the teacher is shown an input but the student is not and the pair are rewarded based off the student's prediction of that input. So the teacher has to use the communication protocol or by some other means send information. Now more technically, the information flow through the environment looks like this. So we have the student in red on the top and we have the teacher in blue at the bottom. In between them in yellow is the communication channel and this is where our randomization methods are applied. Now you can see the observations made at each time step going from left to right. Now we have uh, for the first three time steps here they make the same observations and in the final time step the teacher produces uh, the teacher is given an observation and the student produces a prediction y hat of that observation. Now our first proposal is message mutation. Now message mutation is about randomly tampering with the messages that are sent through the communication channel. So we, with mutation probability PM, we will change it to something else. And now it's key that we change it to something that hasn't been uttered in the past. And this is because we don't want to tamper with the teacher's ability to create a coherent protocol. Now how do we, uh, how does this affect zero shot performance. Now the blue line here is the zero shot performance and as you can see with no mutation probability we have a performance equivalent to the baseline and then it increases up until about 0.3 and then after which it starts to decrease again. Now the reason it starts to decrease is because when there's too much mutation the teacher is never given the opportunity to learn how to develop a protocol on its own. It relies too much on the mutation mechanism. As a result, when it comes up with a stranger who has never met before, it fails to actually develop a coherent protocol and thereby transmit the information. Now, our second proposal is channel permutation. Now, for each episode in, with this setup, a mapping is created by sampling from the symmetric group over communication symbols. Now, this mapping is used by when a agent sends a message to another agent, it's permuted according to this map. So in the cartoon below, we see the red agent saying B, but the map maps B to C, so the blue agent receives C. And this is consistent throughout the entire uh, episode. Now we also investigate with permuting only a subset of the communication symbols. So for example, on the left here, we see that we will randomly pick two symbols and for an episode permute those. Whereas on the left, we permute all of them. For our environment, we only have five symbols here. And we see that the blue line again increases monotonically towards the uh, more strongly applying the channel permutation. However, uh, it does come with a cost, and that is longer training times. We find that both proposals dramatically improve the zero shot coordination. However, message mutation requires more assumptions, and we didn't talk about that here, but it's in the paper. And furthermore, it's more sensitive to the calibration of PM. Channel permutation doesn't require any assumptions. Um, however, it is harder to train, as I said. Now, we designed our environment to be minimal in order to isolate the effects of our proposals. However, in order to assess the scalability of our proposals, they should be transported to more complex domains to see if they could be useful outside of our environment. And with that, thank you for watching.